Time for another board game review, and this time we have the game uh, Star Wars Jabba's Palace, a love letter game. This was sent to me by Asbaday, and is designed by uh, Justin Kempinen. Now, I have reviewed Love Letter on here before. Uh, this one is slightly different, so let's just kind of go into what makes this one different from regular Love Letter. So, just like in regular Love Letter, you are trying to win a certain number of points. These little tokens here. This version has 19 character cards You at the beginning of each round. You take them all and shuffle them into a deck and remove one uh, secretly, and then everybody gets one card in their hand. At the beginning of the game, there is an agenda card. There are different ones. We'll just go with the classic exalted one, <clears throat> which, which highest number in hand wins the round. I will go through the other ones later. So, like in Love Letter, on your turn, you can e you draw a card, and then you play the card uh, that you choose from your hand. In this game, there are different um, classes. So you have the rebels or the palace, as pointed out by these icons here. And like in Love Letter, every card you play needs to be placed in front of you uh, to say you can keep track of who played what. So you play the cards one by one, and the game can end in two ways. Again, either when the deck runs out, uh, and then it based, you, somebody wins based on the agenda. In classic Exalted One, like love, love Letter, it's the highest card, but there are other ones. For example, it might be like My Kind of Scum. Uh, highest number, uh, Palace and Rebel in hand, both win the round. Rescue Mission, most uh, Rebels in your play area win the round. And Jabba's Court, highest sum of uh, Palace cards in play area uh, wins the round. The other way you can win a round is if you are the only player left because everybody else got knocked out. Uh, so yeah, like I said, the agenda stays for the whole game, um, depending on the game you're playing. And in a, let's say, four-player game, you would play until somebody got four points. Now, let's go through the different cards in the game. First up, we got Jabba the Hutt. Uh, you choose another player. If they have a rebel in their hand, they are out. Also, you can see their power ranking here. Rancor, all players with the lowest number in their hand except zero are out. So everybody counts up from one going up and then until somebody gets revealed um, as the lowest. Uh, Boba Fett, choose another player, take the card from their hand and place it in your play area. Bid for Tuna until your next turn players cannot choose you for their card effects like Classic Handmaid. Mercenary, choose another player and secretly compare hands. Whoever has the lower number is out. Very familiar one. Salacious Crumb, choose another player, look at their hand. And Guard, choose another player and guess a number. If they have that number in their hand, they are out. Those are the palace cards. And then here we have the rebel cards. Uh, Luke Skywalker, choose another player. If they have a palace in hand, they are out. Leia, draw two cards, keep one card, and put your other two on the bottom of the deck in any order. Lando Calrissian, choose another player and look at their hand. You may trade hands with them. Chewbacca, choose another player if they have a... a Four palace card or less in hand, they are out. R2-D2, either look at the face down set aside card or choose another player and look at their hand. C-3PO, choose another player and guess a number. If they have the number in hand, they are out. If they do not, they do the same to you. So there's a risk for that one. And Han Solo, at the end of the round, if you have this in hand, you gain a victory token regardless of if you won or not. And that's pretty much it. Just different cards, uh, different objectives you can play with, depending on the game you want to play. Uh, otherwise, it's just classic love letter. Play cards, try to get your opponents eliminated, or uh, fulfill the objective by the end of the round to get points. That's it. So I've already reviewed Love Letter before, <clears throat> and anytime I play a version of Love Letter where there are a ton more cards, I personally feel like a lot of the magic is lost a little bit. Sure, base Love Letter is very simple, but I feel like that's the point of Love Letter. Adding more cards feels like there's more randomness than before. I also don't care about Star Wars, so the theming here is definitely wasted on me. Adding different objectives is a nice way to change up the game that I actually thought was a cool idea. You know, encouraging you to play certain cards in front of you or keep certain cards does make the game more interesting, so that was a good addition. Having two different kinds of cards or classes is an okay idea in concept, but I feel like there weren't enough cards that affected it for it to really feel like it mattered. I do like the Han Solo card, which is the new concept, uh, if you've played other versions of Love Live. Love Life. <laughs> love Letter. I just got Love Live on the brain. 
But I do love giving people the opportunity to sneak a point, you know, even if they don't win. The Rancor card is very silly, but it's fun to have everybody, you know, count up and watch the others hoping that they die first. Um, so there are some good, fun cards in there. If you already don't like Love Letter, this one is definitely not going to change your mind. It feels even more random than before, and if you're unlucky, you might find yourself just not getting a turn for like three rounds in a row. That just can happen with this game. If you're a Star Wars fan, I'd say it's worth picking up if you want like a nice, fun, silly Star Wars card game. Otherwise, though, my preference is still with base vanilla love letter, uh, just because it has less cards and is more refined. This version was okay. I didn't dislike it. I had a good time with it, but I prefer my love letter simpler.